light and truth of God. Accepting in this moment that there is no opposite of light, that all the perceptions that have been made in the name of a separate self are not even darkness, they are nothing. Only the light exists, only love exists, only peace exists. The calling of the beloved to return home to the light is to first accept that the light is the only truth, that there is nothing else that is occurring, that is progressing, that is evolving, nothing else that is on different levels, different degrees of good and bad, right and wrong that all of this fantasy has been used to affirm separation, to affirm that you are a separate self encased in a body that you believe is who you are. Thank God. Only love is real. Mm -hmm. Thank God the nightmares that you walk through mm -hmm. have no meaning and can disappear if truly surrendered. That you no longer want a false life. That you no longer want a life of illusions, a life of battle life of the perception of problems. The perception of problems are plentiful to the mind. And the perception is, is that one, when one problem is given a solution, another one pops up. But to accept that the only problem has been that you believed you were separate. And all the perceptions of problems arise from that belief of separation, coming in different forms, different stories, different circumstances, it seems, but it's all the belief that you're separate from God. And then the dawning of truth, the acceptance of the light, that there is no problem because there is no separation. The belief in separation does not make it so. The belief in separation only says, I am willing to suffer. I am willing to believe in pain. I'm willing to believe in loss and abandonment and sadness and difficulties. I'm willing to believe in the need to succeed. I'm willing to believe <coughs> that there is a winning and a losing. <coughs> But peace is calling, the truth of peace, the light of peace in the stillness of the heart and the willingness to no longer protect the heart with ideas from the mind, 
but allowing the heart to come forward, untethered, open, offering love, offering peace, offering harmony, offering comfort, offering the blessings of God. Every moment is this opportunity. Every moment says, this is the moment I can offer love. This is the moment that I can surrender. This is the moment that I will surrender. This is the moment when I will trust in love instead of what I think I know. And in this heart's devotion, the willingness to breathe and to commune with the holy union of love, the willingness to refuse to accept fear as reality. The moment of breathing and expressing the yes of love. And as you breathe deeply and fully, embracing the call to devotion, to focus all attention on the truth of love, and the willingness to no longer be distracted by the habits of the past, the willingness to shine the light and to have the light shined on the habits and trance of the past, the willingness to follow, the grace, the blessings of God. And as you breathe, the willingness to rest, to surrender every muscle, every tendon, every nervous element of the nervous system, to surrender it all into the hands of God. that as you surrender any tension that you may carry, that you are also willing to surrender the belief that made the tension, the willingness to come back to peace, to rest, in God, resting the mind, surrendering the mind, and breathing deeply as the heart is consciously brought forward, open and available. the willingness to be undefended, to let all beliefs and defenses go, all reactions, all impulses, all beliefs 
that there is anything of unsafety at all. Accepting the eternal life of love. Accepting I am one with God. Accepting there are no thoughts that can replace the truth of God. There are no ideas except the grace of God. Letting divine inspiration lead you. Letting the voice of God speak in the stillness. In the divine communion of the heart. Accepting. As you continue to breathe, let every breath be the yes. Let every breath be the conscious yes to love and to offer love. Breathing and affirming that here in the infinite circle of love we are one. Accepting the union of love, the equality of love, the acceptance that there can be nothing but equality in the truth of God. And all the perceptions that you have believed that you saw through the mind has been originated in the past and has no truth. Nothing to protect, nothing to defend. Yes to love. Accepting in this moment, this sanctuary is filled with love. Nothing else exists. This universe is all love. The belief of separation means nothing, has no reality. There is only one presence here, it is the life force of God. And within this life force, we live and move and breathe as one. The willingness to remember the holy union of love. One heart, (coughs) one breath. Allow this prayer to permeate into every energy body. Allow this prayer to take you on the road to love. That is the choice that you have, the willingness to be taken. Oh, my Father, give me strength, give me courage on this road to be a child of yours on earth and tread the path the Master's show. Oh, my Mother, help me love, give me comfort to be aware, 
To obey these sacred teachings, it was your son who showed the way. O oh, my master, your compassion can see through our pain. For it was you who came to earth to release us from these chains. O oh, my father, I am yours. Give me comfort to be aware. Send your angels here to guide me on this sacred path of the sun. O oh, my father and my mother, who rule the world of love, send your angels to receive me through the gateway of pure love. All day long, you have the opportunity for your heart to be asking for strength. To remember the truth all day long you have the opportunity of an intimate communion with the divine all day long you can be communing with the Holy Spirit all day long you can be in that divine communion of love, in a quiet stillness of the heart, communing. Communing and asking for strength, asking for the courage to walk on the road in honesty, in peace, in the willingness to find your way, the willingness to be at peace. And the willingness to be at peace is completely connected to the willingness to surrender what you think you know. The willingness to accept that what you think you know is the disturbance of your peace. And the willingness to be led back, constantly led back to the stillness, the peace of the heart. Send your angels here to guide me on this sacred path. When you ask to be guided, you will be guided. The wanting of the heart opens the door to walk with the companions of love that will show you the way. Let your awareness be illuminated in every moment. Elevate my thoughts, elevate my mind as I give everything into the hands of God. As I want my mind to be elevated into the truth of God into the heights of the beauty of love, in the brilliance of the firmament I ask to be shown the truth of love, in the brilliance of the firmament I call upon the light of love, I open my heart and let my heart and mind be invigorated with the truth of love accepting deeply every sacred teaching, letting it bathe my heart with truth. I'm here to sing because it is what I've been called to do, to praise all divine beings and to remember our Blessed Mother in every moment affirming and confirming that I am always surrounded by the truth of love. And the veil pensamento 
Adeus las nas alturas para reconhecer o brilho da formosura, o brilho da formosura. É uma luz de alento que limpa meu coração e vigora meu pensamento. Aqui eu vou contando que a minha lida reza, viva rei Juramidam e a rainha da floresta. Possibly it does not occur to you all day to be having this divine communion with the spirit of love. To be calling on the spirit of love to elevate your mind, to bring it into the heights of love, to no longer want the mind to be filled with its petty, small thoughts of what you think you know. Mm. but rather that you want to elevate into the divine mind of God the willingness that the mind be filled with the brilliance of the universe and to keep coming back for more and more communion with God. No longer wanting to live in the past of what you thought you knew, but the willingness for a new life to begin. Someone untied your camel. I cannot sit still with humanity believing that they are in chains. I cannot act mute hearing the world's loneliness crying near the friend's heart. My love for God is such that I could dance with him tonight without you, but I would rather have you there. Is your caravan lost? It is if you no longer weep from gratitude or happiness or weep from being cut deep with the awareness of the extraordinary beauty that emanates from the most simple act and common object. My dear, is your caravan lost? It is if you can no longer be kind to yourself mm. and loving to those who must live with the sometimes difficult task of loving you. <laughs> At least come to know that someone untied your camel last night, for I hear its gentle voice calling for God in the desert. At least come to know that the light will always hold a lantern for you with galaxies blooming inside and that I will always guide your soul to the divine warmth and exhilaration of our beloved's tent. There is a call here. The call is the gratitude. The gratitude that you were so mistaken that everything of the past was a mirage. Maybe that's where the camel was going. 
but now, now is the time, the use of time, to be filled with so much gratitude and happiness that in this incarnation you are remembering the truth of love, that you have the opportunity to remember the truth of love. I cannot sit still with humanity believing it's in change. I cannot act mute hearing the beliefs within the world of loneliness, crying near the friend's heart. That divine place of not being able to sit still with the belief of humanity in chains is the call of the heart to remember the truth within. That it is only in your own remembering that you can truly serve. There is no helpfulness in the world of false sadness for the world. There is no helpfulness in joining the world in the belief of pain and suffering. There is no helpfulness in worrying about humanity for something that is an illusion of separation. There is a calling that when you hear or feel the belief in loneliness within the world, it is the moment of affirming the truth of love, affirming the light for everyone through your own remembering. That is your gift. That is your purpose. That is your mission in this life. There is no helpfulness in joining others in worry, concern, upset. There, there's no love there. The truth of love is in the alignment with the light and the willingness to hold every beloved in that light, to refuse to accept in your own everyday life <coughs> the beliefs that you've held of the past, of judgment and opinions, of the belief of concern because you believe that you know how someone else's life should look. Mm -hmm. And to affirm that you don't. That this is a life that has been made in the belief of separation. And that the life itself, this incarnation, has only one purpose, to remember God. And everything in this world, when surrendered into the hands of God, can be used for that divine purpose.
To the ego identity, it feels blasphemous to not join in the misery. It calls to you like a drug. It's not to turn away in fear. It's to open the heart and offer the light of truth. And in that offering of the light of truth, you receive healing. That is the offering. That is the gift. My love for God is such that I could dance with him tonight without you, but I would rather have you there. And then to open the heart and hold every beloved in your heart as you dance with God. Mm -hmm. To refuse to agree any longer in the perception of separation. And to refuse to need proof in order to accept the light of God as your divine intention. But to be willing to leap with faith that only love is real. Is your caravan lost? Do you perceive yourself as lost without? It, if you no longer weep from gratitude or happiness, or weep from being cut deep with the awareness of the extraordinary beauty that emanates from the most simple act and common object, you must believe that you are lost. But this is the call the call to gratitude and to weep from gratitude is when the heart is bleeding bleeding in the happiness that only love is real to be so grateful that you were mistaken about what you thought you knew. In every day, every moment, when you believe you perceive something and you attach to it a meaning that you are giving it, that is the moment. That is the moment of weeping with gratitude that you weren't correct, that you were mistaken, and that you withdraw, truly withdraw the concept that you were so tempted to make, the story that, that the ego so wanted to formulate so wanted to be right about and instead weeping with gratitude with joy that you were mistaken and that you can change your mind that you can choose to hold only the light of love and that you will not put a false identity on anyone, mm. that you will not hold back the beloveds from remembering God by making a story that has no reality. To open to compassion
the compassion that heals the heart, the compassion for every beloved, and that the awareness of compassion raises everything up into the vibration of God, the willingness to bring that compassion of truth and blessings and grace to every beloved. And while you're offering this compassion and the gratitude of the recognition that there is a place in your heart that can now offer the compassion, that deep gratitude that says, thank God I was mistaken about the past. Thank God the past is disappearing. And I'm finding the devotion to love. Thank God. Being cut deep with the awareness of the extraordinary beauty that emanates from the most simple act and common object that everything that you look on in every moment is a moment of quiet stillness where you appreciate the oneness of everything. That you don't look on objects anymore as things you own, things that you decide are possession, but rather that you look at every common object with a new awareness of oneness, of divine union, and you let go of the concept of what the object means, what meaning you have given to it, that you have in the past given it a meaning that says either the object has worth or no worth or little worth or more worth depending on what you think you know and it means nothing but to accept that within every object is the truth of God it is no longer a possession It is the beauty of God. The gratefulness for everything that is offered in every moment. The gratefulness for the divine synchronicity that every single situation in your life can be the remembering of love and the letting go of what you thought you knew the willingness to accept that only love is real, to walk in the world in peace and harmony. My dear, is your caravan lost? At least remember that it is if you no longer can be kind to yourself and loving to those who must live with the sometimes difficult task of loving you. The difficult task of loving you is the agreement within the world that when you perceive that it is difficult to love others, you are believing that it is difficult to love you. You hold a concept of what you thought love was. And there is no kindness there. There is no loving kindness of the truth, the willingness to embrace. There is no other. The willingness to love with divine equality where everything in the union of love has no differences. That one beloved is not worth love and the other one isn't. 
that you have not judged by personality or by reactions or by a concept of what you thought the other was, but rather that everyone melt and be seen as the heart of God in divine equality, letting go of all sense of the need for protection, all sense of the need of distancing, but the willingness to come forward and offer love. This is the leap of faith. This is the leap of abandoning the mind's concepts and truly following the guidance of love. To love with an open heart and without <coughs> any ideas of who someone is or what you think they are which has nothing to do with anything of God. The truth of love that is the purity and innocence of God that is truly everyone. To love the beloved who fills your car with gas to let your heart burst open with so much happiness, so much gratitude for this beloved's presence, to see beyond any concept of how you have put them in their place in your mind, that you gave them a place of importance in your mind, that you gave them a role that you assigned to them that made them either more important or less important or more deserving of your love or less deserving of your love. This is all going on in the mind, in the unconscious trance. And the, the truth of waking up is to begin to wake up to another choice, to wake up out of that trance of habit, of believing that your caravan is lost, and to accept and stop and recognize that each beloved is the light of God in complete equality and deserving of the complete equality of that truth. And that your healing, your journey of remembering is dependent on that willingness to love each beloved equally and fully, completely that beloved who is pumping gas is the Christ. Mm -hmm. That beloved who is bagging the groceries is the Christ. That beloved who is cleaning the toilets is the Christ. Are you bowing before them? Are you opening your heart and pouring love or do you see yourself as elevated from them because of the roles that you've given them? Mm -hmm. These are the choices of love every day, every moment. To break the trance, to no longer be willing to live in a trance of levels and degrees and differences that affirm separation, but to allow the truth of love to truly manifest. And the manifestation comes through your heart through your willingness to accept every beloved as the Christ in every moment. How many times have you identified and given importance to someone because of the role that you have given them, elevated them, 
to a position of more important, more awesome than someone else because of their appearance, because of their identity, because of the, the role that you decided was true. And in that you make your categories and your levels and your degrees and you make your world so that you feel that you're in control of it and you know something. But all the while, the truth of God is waiting to be seen, is waiting to be met, is waiting to be embraced, and waiting for you to open your heart in devotion to every beloved. In the belief of fame, the mind, the ego identity has elevated beloveds by how famous they might be, how much status they have in the world. And you've believed this. And it has no reality no truth. And all of this is the journey of love. All of this that's been made up is being called to be surrendered, to open to the light, to allow the Holy Spirit to illuminate the mind and all of the beliefs that are harbored in that mind, that identity that keeps making separation in the belief that you can make separation. You can't really make separation, but you can live in what you think you make. And you can suffer in what you think you make. And there is the connecting point of the realization that pain and suffering is not coming from out there. Pain and suffering is coming from within the mind and what you think you know. It is the source of pain. It is the source of your belief in suffering. Almost every beloved is looking outside thinking, I'm going to finally find the culprit that's making me miserable. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to see through the light of the Holy Spirit that it's a, a house of mirrors. A house of mirrors that keeps reflecting back to you your own beliefs of separation, your own beliefs of levels and degrees and differences, your own beliefs of pain and suffering and what you deserve. But there's no love in that. And the call is to open your heart and accept the love that you are and offer that truth, undefended, with every beloved. At least come to know that someone untied your camel last night. For I hear its gentle voice calling for God in the desert. Are you calling for God all day? That's your desert. Align yourself with a camel and call for God all day. Commune with God all day. Direct me. Show me the way. I'm willing. Show me kindness and how to be kind. Show me how to bless. Show me the way. Light my way in the truth of love. The, the lantern is always being held with galaxies blooming inside. and realize that I will always guide you 
to the divine warmth and exhilaration of our beloved's tent. But there is, has to be that deep wanting and acceptance of the truth of love. And where is the truth of love? It's in the stillness. The habit of wanting to know is the addiction of humanity. It's what runs the ego's life. And where you're really called to is the stillness in that quiet, still place within. All things quietly fall into place because you're resting in God. In love, all conflicts are resolved because they don't exist and love is accepted. Love is held as the center of truth. The heart is quiet and the mind is at rest in the stillness of love. The stillness of love is what you avoid because you're afraid to meet the stillness. You're afraid of the underbelly of the stillness. You're afraid to be with you. You're afraid of the self-loathing that's been running deep within. But at some point, you have to stop running. And it isn't just the feet that <coughs> run. You don't have to be a marathon runner to be running. The mind is running. Mm. The mind is planning, thinking, assessing, coming up with decisions, conclusions. That's the running. Instead of, thy will be done. Let me come into the stillness and let all of this self-loathing that I've been so afraid of be illuminated and to be shown that it means nothing and it is nothing. It was all self-made, self-generated, self-conceived, all in the belief of being separate from God and needing to be punished, willing now to accept that these are lies, that these have never been true, and that everything in the everyday life within time has been a reflection of that self-loathing, that running to try to be safe by control, by the belief that there is something to control when there is nothing to control. The willingness for love to flow, the willingness to move in the world with no expectations. Imagine a day, just a day, just an hour, where you let go of all expectations and you let love reveal itself. Where the mind is not grabbing at every scenario <coughs> and every object and going, oh, this is what this is, this is what this is, this is how this is going to be, this is what this means, this is what I know about this, this is what I want to happen, this is how it should be, this, this is, this is, this is. That's the running. That's the running in desperation to be in control of everything. And in that belief that you are unsafe and that you need to control, you've built a defense system that is terrified of the stillness, that is terrified of opening the heart. But all of love is calling you to a new way. Love is calling you to accept that only love exists 
and all the stories that are being made up, small, large, long, short, are all to try to be in control, to know something. But to be is to be without a story. To be is to rest, to allow. Nothing is happening. To accept the joy of just being. No longer battling with the world that you made. No longer willing to battle. If truth is beyond all opinions, how are you going to find truth when you're so filled with opinions? There's no possibility there. You can beg for truth. You can keep saying, truth, where are you? Yes, I want truth. Yes, I want to know the truth. But my opinions are on every page of my book. The opinions fill every little crevice. Where is the room for truth? The willingness to no longer put your faith in the opinions of the past. Because every opinion is coming from the past. If you have an opinion about a chair, that's coming from your past. It's not, it's not something that you've just discovered. It's because you believe you know what the chair means, what the chair is. And it's that deep willingness of love to no longer hold on to these concepts, but to open your being into the truth of love. There's a hymn <coughs> that I received sitting in meditation and all of a sudden hearing all these little angels singing and they were all singing and announcing that the beloved that was known as Jesus was always here but the hymn was about surrender. Mm -hmm. Surrender your fears. <coughs> surrender your sorrow. Surrender to the light. Jesus is here. Open your heart. Open your being. Open in every moment. Jesus is here. <coughs> surrender to the heart of Jesus. Alleluia, alleluia, Jesus is here. To weep with gratitude that all of these divine beings that have walked the earth, that have come to open the doors of truth and light, that you have this divine relationship, but you have to want the relationship, you have to cultivate the relationship, you have to commune in the relationship. Now the mind would say, well, I don't ever hear an answer. Just keep communing. Just keep letting your heart pour its love in the happiness and the acceptance that Jesus is here, that the Christ of light is always here. 
the acceptance of the strength. Oh, my Father, give me strength. I ask for strength, I receive strength. I want strength, I receive strength. The willingness. That as you accept the truth of love and accept that you are the divine light of God and that you will never be without and you accept these divine truths, there is also at the same element the letting go of all the illusions that you've made up. So it's accepting of the divine truth and the surrender of the illusions of separation. And to question the illusions is the first step in undoing them. Without your participation of what you made, the illusions can't be let go. The illusions of pain and suffering cannot be magically erased. They are your world that you made up. And there needs to be the surrender, the relinquishment of what you held so preciously and so strongly in your grasp, the willingness to let them go. The willingness to no longer be right about what you thought you knew. The willingness to be set free. The freedom is in the relinquishment. And the freedom is in the acceptance of your divine light. Just to accept that you are the divine light of God. It's not a knowing, it's not an experience, it's first the acceptance. That is where the trust is. That is where the willingness to enter into the gratitude that you are mistaken and thank God you weren't right. Because if everyone was right about what you thought you knew, there would be no healing. There would be the continuation of hell that you made. But it isn't God's will for you to suffer. It isn't God's will for you to be in the belief of separation. It isn't God's will for you to wander in the desert like a camel. God's will for you is joy and peace because it's your natural state, because it's the truth of who you are, and the willingness to accept it. The simplicity of willingness The ego hates that because the ego thrives on complexity and confusion. That is its domain. Simply putting one foot in front of the other and saying yes is not the way of illusion but it is the way of love, the willingness to love. To accept that you truly do not perceive your own best interests in your daily life is the willingness to be shown a new way. That the concepts that you're holding on to from the past that you've used, that you've developed, do not hold your own best interests. They do not serve you. Those habits were made in the name of defense. Those habits were developed in the belief that there was something to protect, 
something to gain, something to win, something to prove, something to protect. And to accept that you are not aware of your own best interests is to open to a new way. And to accept that you don't perceive your own best interests is in its very nature a place of humility. It's not a place of condemnation. It's a place that finally realizes, I don't know the way home. I don't know how to open those doors. I don't know. But love will always lead me. And every sacred teaching that I've been given is the gift from God. The sacred teachings that I weep with gratitude because I'm so happy that God found me and that I found God. And that in this incarnation, I was finally ready to say yes to God. That I was finally ready to surrender. That I was finally ready to realize that all of the beliefs of what I saw on the outside was conjured up and that I, I lost my awareness of the truth of God's creations. But now I'm ready to find them again, to return home, <clears throat> to accept my welcome home. and to accept the divine alchemy of love's healing. The power of healing is completely beyond the concepts of the mind. You see in the world, through the ego's lenses, you see the world as cause and effect. And you see through a limited dimensional awareness. And in that limitation, that you've restricted yourself to of your knowing, you're not aware of the divine alchemy of healing. You're not aware of the, the profound power of love's healing. That everything that is surrendered into the hands of God truly will be healed. if you choose to let it go, if you choose to no longer hold it as a possession of identity. To stand in the light and pray and say, unravel me, dismantle the concepts of self that I made. I don't even know what they all are, but I'm surrendering it all. I want it all healed. I'm ready for the divine alchemy of love to have its way with me, to take me, to show me, to teach me, to tutor me, I want to learn the way of love. And I'm happy to accept all the teachers of love. Show me the way. I'm willing. <clears throat> the habit of the mind <coughs> has one purpose and that is to make problems. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any other agenda. It's just there to make problems and to give you a false identity with control. 
And if it doesn't have enough problems, it will go and seek some more. There's a never-ending supply of the belief in problems. Never-ending supply of what all look like different problems, but they're all the same. They're all the belief that you're separate from God. They're all the belief that there's a world to control, a world to get a, a handle on, a world to figure out. And this is where the tiredness comes from. This is where the pain comes from. The belief that you have a job to do. When your only purpose is to rest in God and allow and accept that only love exists. Nothing else. Nothing else. Gratitude. Gratitude is the doorway, if you will accept it. Gratitude for this moment of healing, for every moment of healing, for every situation that, that seems to appear that gives you the opportunity of healing, of surrender. Every situation that you think occurs is there for surrender. To give every situation into the hands of God and then to disown that situation as yours, as anything that you know about, but to give every, every relationship, every situation, every moment surrendered into the hands of God to be used for love. accepting only love. The willingness to remember love. And to remember that the mind has been made to serve the ego. The brain has been made to serve protection. Surrender the mind into the hands of God and let it return to its true state of the wisdom of love. Joined with the heart, resting in the truth of oneness. and accepting that there is no problem except the belief that you are separate from God. You have a choice in every moment to choose love, to choose happiness, to choose peace, or to choose the past of what you think you know. That divine choice is yours. But you must take the choice and actively make the choice. Only love exists. Gratefully so. Grateful that only love exists. <laughs>